Hello, this is Shane from Procom Enterprises. Uh, welcome to our brief demo of the basic features of the Vigilant Control Center 7. Now, you can of course have the best, most advanced cameras installed at your site, but without a good user interface, actually using them can be a real chore. Now, in our opinion, ACC7 has the best and easiest to use user interface, so I'm going to show you some of the great features that are baked into the standard version of the software, show you how great it is to use. Now, um, I have already logged into a couple sites here that I'm going to show you some, uh, some features from. Uh, our basic user interface layout, we have our uh, sidebar here. You can also call it the tree because if you drop one here, it'll show you all of the cameras and all the other saved views and, and some other things that are going to be in there. I'll get into that later. We also have the uh, live and recorded toggle. So if we had, for instance, this camera open, we just switch to recorded and then it will show everything that's uh, <laughs> including the installation of that camera a while ago. Uh, it'll show you um, everything that that camera has recorded on the timeline here at the bottom. Uh, we also have a toolbar here. Uh, so with the zoom in tool, for instance, I can click or I can click and drag and make that full screen. Uh, same thing with the minus. It's a lot easier to uh, back out that way. Of course, with those functions, I can also just use the scroll wheel. And wherever my mouse is pointed, that's where it'll zoom in and out. So that's very easy to use. Also, if I'm zoomed in, I can grab the hand tool. It's also called the pan tool. That lets me click and drag and pan around through that view. Uh, so that's nice and easy. This is a, a, a PTZ control function, and uh, I will get into that uh, a little bit later. Up in here, if we have our go to our client settings, uh, we can change a few things here. We can have it uh, automatically restore your window layout so that when you close the program, it'll reopen the exact same way that you left it. We can program it to automatically log in to servers for us. That makes it a lot, of, a lot faster and easier. Um, also is a security uh, concern, so just uh, make sure that you're the only one using that machine if you enable that. Under display, we can switch between our light theme, which is default, and our dark theme, which I prefer. A little easier on the eyes. Uh, what else do we have here? We can uh, switch our overlays. Um, getting a little more advanced there, but uh, anyway, that uh, can ease some uh, some day-to-day -day, um, use cases. Uh, dark mode, I think, is probably the most important thing to, to switch there, especially if you're a, a secure if you have a security staff who are going to be staring at the screen for a long period of time. So now let's go do some uh, camera functions. I have this view opened up here already. I can show you some things. Now first, uh, these top three, uh, this is a multi-head camera from a Vigilant. This is actually all one camera with three discrete uh, camera heads in it. So what's great about that is we have a full panoramic, full detailed view uh, from one position uh, in which I can zoom in and out uh, very easily. Uh, the cameras can be positioned individually to get a slightly different shot depending on the location and the need. But all three of these imagers only use one license because they're one IP device. So that's pretty nice. We also have a fisheye camera here. This is a full 360 degree field of view. Now that's not really how we see the world, of course, but if we, again, using our pan tool and our scroll wheel, we can zoom in and then pan around within this field of view as if it were a PTZ. Of course, it's not a PTZ because it's recording all 360 degrees at one time. So that is very handy. We love that feature. Uh, we also have, um, uh, yes, our PTZ functions. Let's get to that now. Now, this is a third-party PTZ camera. So when we grab our PTZ controls, we see a little reticle in the center. And wherever we move our mouse, you'll notice that that pointer is uh, is changing orientation. So if we click and hold and drag, we can pan quickly, we can pan faster, we can go any which way we want, and it'll the camera will follow our mouse, which is very cool. I like that a lot. And then to zoom in, once again, we use our scroll wheel. But now we're not digitally zooming here. We are using the actual zoom functions. And look how sharp that is. The actual zoom uh, built into the camera is what I should say, to clarify that. So we can go 
way down the street here and still have nice sharp detail. So that's great. I'm going to zoom back out here and I'm going to just show you one difference with uh, when we're using an Avigilant PTC because it of course uh, does all the same pan, tilt, and zoom functions but it just works a little bit different. Now if for me to double click out of this I have to switch back to my my mouse tool so don't uh, don't get yourself confused with that if you're actually using it. But this is an Avigilant PTZ camera. Now notice that that pixelation initially, that's because uh, it's switching from a low bandwidth version to the full bandwidth. That's making uh, the program faster to use and it's uh, reducing the overall network bandwidth usage uh, for this application. So that's just, uh, that's baked into the, uh, to the application. Now I'm gonna switch to my PTZ controls. It looks a little different uh, because in this case, the uh, PTZ will automatically click wherever we, or we're automatically panned to wherever we click. So I'm just clicking once. See, I'm gonna click up here. It's gonna fully zoom and pan up there. Same thing here. So the click and drag isn't working, but what we can do when we click and drag is select this box, and the camera automatically pans and zooms to fill the screen with, with our selection. So that is, uh, very neat and handy as well. So if I zoom out here, we can get back to our uh, our um, starting position. Okay, um, I can also show you um, here. This is a very nice uh, camera. This is an eight megapixel camera. Now it doesn't look like it right now, but that's because we are zoomed way in. So notice all the detail that we still had because this camera is so high resolution. We can zoom way in and still have detail, be able to see who's getting in a car from, I'm guessing that's gotta be 200 feet away, 250 maybe. Um, and there are much higher megapixel cameras available from a Vigilant. So um, the sky's really the limit. Uh, it just depends on whatever you need to get the most optimal shot for your facility. Um, we also have, I'm gonna close this one because we're gonna come back to it. Now here's a map of this building. And now this is a nice way to help you kind of be able to track uh, maybe where a car drives in and see, okay, so, so they came in at the intersection and then they went to this camera. So if I click that camera, it'll pop that open for me. Same thing, if they kept on going, we can click It'll automatically show me a preview, and I can click on it, and it'll pop it open right, right for me there. I can go full screen, double click. It'll open a separate view, view tab for me. So that is very handy. You, you can set that up very easily. I won't go into it today, but um, that's um, if, you've, if you can just grab a screenshot off uh, Google Earth, and you can drag and drop your cameras on it. Very easy to set up, and also very easy to use. Now. Uh, let's do uh, some recording. Uh, let's look at some search features. Now Now that I've toggled to the recorded uh, mode, I can look at our timeline here. Now, uh, red is a recorded video. Um, a Vigilant is very advanced about its motion recording, so that's what we leave cameras on by default. Um, occasionally there's uh, reasons to do 24-7 uh, recording or to even put it on a schedule where it's recording 24-7 between certain hours and then only on motion off schedule. But in any case, the timeline is very easy to use as well. Again, using your scroll wheel and depending on where you're pointing your mouse, you can zoom in and out of that timeline really easy um, and see where your motion events are happening. Um, what I was going to show was on this camera. Here we can do some uh, search functions. So if I go up to search and let's click motion. Now this highlighted area is what is the area that it would search for motion in. So by default it's full screen, but we can be very specific about what spot we want to look for motion in. So let's say I want to see anyone that might be going in and out of that overhead door up there. 
So let's drag our box to that spot. Let's specify our date range. So right now it's only about four hours. Let's uh, let's change that. Oh, actually, let's uh, go all the way to. Let's start from Monday and go to Tuesday. So we've been searching for a full hour. We can specify what we're looking for, either people or vehicles, neither, both. Let's search, keep searching for both. We can set our confidence threshold uh, so, so it's a little higher, a little more specific if we like. Uh, we can set our minimum threshold time a little higher. That might make it, uh, uh, might narrow down our results a bit. And then we can click search. So now it's showing us a list of all the motion events that happened within that time frame. And all we have to do is click and click play. And we'll see what motion happened in that area with a confidence rating, an object count, duration. This all helps us to find exactly what we're looking for. So motion is very handy. Now, if I wanted to, I could bookmark this event. I could export this event. I can pop it open into a new view and show someone. Uh, it's very easy to go from whatever you're looking at to what you need to do with it. Now, let's try another type of search. Thumbnail search. Now, again, we're looking at the same camera, but notice I can also add other cameras to the same search. For this purpose, I'm not going to do that. But uh, I did notice that at some time, uh, somebody had, uh, this, this sign had been knocked over. I want to see who stood it up for us. So again, let's look at our, let's go to our calendar, specify that same date range, and click search. So now it's going to show me a thumbnail and see it was knocked over here and stood over here, stood up here, so we can double click. So that's going to zoom in our timeline and show us thumbnails of that more narrow search uh, parameter. Double click here, it'll do it again. Same thing. What we're doing is we're stepping in to a, a more narrow time frame. And so now look, it looks like it uh, happened here. So what I can, I can do is right click and click open in view. Hit the space bar for, to play it. And here's our guy. He stood our sign up for us, how nice of him. I couldn't do it with your foot. You'd actually uh, bend over and grab it, but there we go. That was nice. So you see how easy it is to search for something. Say somebody had stolen something. So you would search for where it had been, like maybe this car was stolen. You would select that box and then look, look for the time that it was there versus when it wasn't. And then you could find really quickly when somebody had stolen it so you could export that video and send it to the authorities. So those are the basic functions of ACC7. Um, we'd be happy to uh, show you, help you how you can incorporate this technology into your facility. By all means, uh, contact us uh, by look, uh, checking out our website at cctvchicago.com, and uh, we'd be happy to give you an on-site demonstration as well. Thanks for watching.